Welcome back to the Morning Show here on Arise News. Joining us now is Ojinika Ope with stories trending around the world. Jinix, hello. Excellent. Good well, I was you. actually going to say excellent until you said Jinix. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Tundu. Yeah, How yeah, are you? Jinix was coming. <laughs> we'll just last yeah, for a yeah, month yeah. at least. I'll, I'll hold on for a month. But mm -hmm. the thing is, everyone was coordinating today, including Rufai. Except for you. What happened there? I always stand there. Well, We're all great. <laughs> I love it. Rufa, you, did you get the memo? <laughs> I'm sure we got the telepathic memo. <laughs> no, Tundu, we're not Tundu sure Tundu what happened the memo to Tundu. Too. She's got some black in it. So Tundu's no, we're all wearing grey, Rufa. Yeah, but grey or <laughs> <are> black. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. Okay. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, billionaire Warren Buffett has announced that he will resign his role as trustee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and will donate $4.1 billion worth of his Berkshire Hathaway shares to five foundations. In Russia, the Defense Ministry said its fighter jet dropped bombs on the path of a British Royal Navy warship on the Black Sea near Crimea after the warship entered three kilometers into its territorial waters. The UK Defence Ministry, however, denied the accusation, saying that the vessel, HMS Defender, was making a legal and an innocent passage. In Spain, 75-year-old billionaire John Marcafe, who was facing tax evasion charges, was found dead on Wednesday in a prison near Barcelona. His death comes after Spain's National Court in Madrid approved his extradition to the United States to face charges. In Italy, 28-year-old Matteo Villadita, who wears a Spider-Man costume to entertain sick children at a hospital in Vatican City, grabbed the attention of many when he stopped Pope Francis during his weekly Wednesday audience to gift him a face mask. In South Africa, two brothers, Amir and Raiz Kaje, who ran a cryptocurrency investment platform called AfriCrypt, have vanished with $3.6 billion worth of Bitcoin in what could potentially be the biggest cryptocurrency heist in history. Under sports, Vanessa Bryant and other families have settled their lawsuit against the company that operated the helicopter involved in the crash that killed NBA legend Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna Bryant, and seven others in January 2020. Honor Entertainment, musician Britney Spears broke her silence in a court-ordered hearing on Wednesday regarding her court-ordered conservatorship that has governed her life for 13 years. The singer told the judge that she wants to end the conservatorship, calling it abusive and denouncing her father for exerting control over her life. Her father has been a conservator of her estimated $60 million estate since 2008. She really grew up poor like me. Don't believe in nothing but the Almighty. Finally, Nigerian Afrobeat singer Ayodeji Balogun, popularly known as Wizkid, has finally received his Grammy Award trophy. Wizkid won in the Best Music Video category at the 63rd Grammy Awards for his collaboration with Beyonce and her daughter Blue Ivy in Brown Skin Girl. Skin just like pearls, best thing in the world. I never trade you for anybody else. That brown skin girl. Congratulations to our Nigerians. Just two days, a few uh, weeks ago, it was Burner Boy receiving his trophy, and now it's uh, Whiskey. You know we love Whiskey. We love Whiskey. <laughs> and Burner Boy. Yes. But Tundu, I wanted to talk to you about Britney Spears. You know, I really do feel sorry for her at this point because she is obviously crying out. Just last month, she had gone to rehab again, complaining about the fact that this conservatorship is ruining her life. I don't know what's going to happen if the judge is going to grant her petition. She will have to file a petition to remove that, I gather. But imagine not being properly advised by her lawyers, as she has claimed for years, that that was even a possibility. Mm. The sort of parasitic nature of this story, her own biological father and all the lawyers feeding fat off of this woman is actually so depressing. And the part that she said that she has had to wear an IUD because she's not allowed to get pregnant or get married is just astounding. I'll yes. tell you something. Many years ago, I actually mm. witnessed 
the mayhem of this woman's life. Oh, I, I was shopping on yes. some street and there was just a horde of people without ex exaggeration, like 200 people. And I was like, what's going on here? And I heard Britney Spears is shopping. And this is the kind of madness. And this is what tends to happen with fame. I don't know anybody ever wants to be famous. First, the isolation of it all. And then they tend to rely on you know, other stimulants to, you know, sort of cope with this, the pressure of the lifestyle, which can lead to mental illnesses, can lead to breakdowns and untimely deaths. And even your own family will turn around and knife you. Look at Whitney Houston. Her own father sued her for $100 million. Yes. So what um, Britney Spears' dad is doing is really nothing new. I can list at least 50 celebrities who have accused their parents right. of attacking them in that way. I really hope she gets her freedom. I hope She's so. Let me tell you what she said, because that's what I was looking for. She wrote, I mean, she when she uh, was at court uh, yesterday, she said, I am traumatized. I am not happy. I can't sleep. I am so angry, it's insane. I feel ganged up on, yes. bullied, left out and alone. I'm tired of feeling alone. I hope she doesn't commit suicide. That's Listen, the this issue. This is the thing. They so they really need to, to find out a way to help her because she, if free she's speaking Britney, out like this. Yeah. Free <laughs> yeah. Britney. All and right, there's then. a sexism okay. of it. No, I'm going to go there. There's a sexism of it all. Mm -hmm. It's this perception of this woman. Women were often just robbed of our agency mm -hmm. and disrespected. Yeah. This will not happen to a man. I don't want to name names. So celebrity males like uh, rappers, famous rappers, billionaire rappers have had public mental breakdowns. Nobody did this to them. Yeah. Basically, it traps them, imprisoned them in this fashion. Let's it's hope disgusting. she gets help. Well, but I think we'll it's also a good development yeah. that he, she finally got a chance to address the court yes. Yes. and to speak out, uh, even if that was uh, virtually, given the... Uh, the nature of the times, but at least we heard from her. Uh, because originally, again, you look at the flip side of it, that conservatorship was supposed to protect her. It is supposed to protect her. She had mental health her. issues, she it lacked is. the capacity right. to manage her own affairs and all of that. But of course, you know, from uh, a humanistic point of view, it's probably something that should not continue forever. Yes. And whatever help she needs should be provided for her. I exactly, guess. that's the whole point. All right then. Yeah. We'll begin what's trending with reactions. From the interview Islamic cleric Ahmad Gumi granted right here on The Morning Show on Wednesday in which he accused some officers of the Nigerian army of colluding with bandits to perpetrate various crimes in the country. The Nigerian army in a statement on Wednesday denied the allegation and described it as a calculated attempt to denigrate the Nigerian military and undermine the sacrifices of the soldiers who are working tirelessly to restore peace and stability across the country. In the statement, Brigadier General Onyama Nwachiku, the Director of Army Public Relations, emphasized that the Nigerian Army is a bona fide symbol of national unity that has conducted its constitutional responsibilities in the most professional manner, in line with global best practices of adherence to the rules of engagement and protection of the fundamental human rights of citizenry. Well, let's take a quick playback of that interview before we come back for a discussion. I know this band is, if you don't know, they are cooperating with a lot of bad elements in our security system. This is a business. So many people are involved. You'd be so surprised. And I'm still against anybody who is committing crime against this nation, against humanity. Cooperating with a lot of people in, in our security system, expatiate on that. So that means you're saying there's complicity? Our security architecture is working with the bandits? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes. Oh, Oh, yes, oh, yes, they were caught in Zamfara, they were caught everywhere. How, do they, how, can, how can these big weapons get across into, cross our borders? How can these big weapons cross our borders and get into the forest without the cooperation of some bad elements in the security system? It's not possible. If I, if I, if I give the same amount, can you take it into the UK? You cannot make it in, into UK because the security is a lot. Well, Rafai, I guess it's great that the Nigerian army has come out to respond to this allegation by Ahmad Gumi, but I don't know if they did a good job because he did accuse the officers, saying that there are some in Zamfara that they found, you know, uh, exchanging weapons with the bandits. What is your take on that? So I read the report, the reaction, uh, and Oji, maybe you, you take that reaction by the Nigerian military. There's a part in the speech that says, 
although there might be some bad eggs, mm. I'm, I'm not quoting verbatim now, but there's a part in that reaction. So that means the military does admit that there might be some bad eggs. You know, you could check the report again, correct? I've been trying to dig out the reports to verify. So correct me if I'm wrong on that, but, I, but I'm sure. Yes. I'm cocksure yes. I read that this morning. Yes. Yeah, that the military did say, although there might be some bad eggs, and that should point you to something. So the next thing the military should do is to investigate. We should get bad eggs out. We can't say that although there might be some bad eggs, but the military is always yada, 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 committed to the uh, sovereignty of Nigeria. We know all of that. Good mm -hmm. PR stuff. But that line that the military alludes to the fact that there could be some bad eggs is what the military should now hold on and investigate. And everybody that is found wanting should be brought to the law because Nigerians are dying. We can't allow this to continue. And it is shocking. And when you check all the papers this morning, it was front page headlines. The fact that the military has been fingered in this protracted war against banditry or unknown government or what we're fighting. So the military must have to investigate. And whoever is found culpable should be dealt with. Nigerians have a right to know all of this because this is scary. Right. I was just more concerned about the weapons that he, you know, Ahmad Gumi had uh, talked about. The fact that how is it possible for these bandits to possess that amount of weapons? So this is the thing. Yes. So everybody knows that I'm a huge supporter of the Nigerian military and the Nigerian police force for the work that they do in trying to protect us. But we also know for a fact that they have bad eggs. So I don't agree with the statement that the military felt the need to issue, right. accusing Sheikh Gumi of making a sweeping allegation. I'm quoting that statement. Yes. It was not a sweeping allegation. And thank you for playing what he said again. To. He said some people. And he also made the very sensible point of how do the weapons get into Nigeria? It's not they're not magic know. into yes. the country. So I think the military, instead of this knee-jerk sort of defensive stance that they've taken would do better to launch an investigation because whether or not we agree with Shegumi fraternizing with bandits, the fact is that he does speak to them. The fact is that he is privy to some intelligence and I don't think what he said should be dismissed. No, it should not be dismissed at all. Dr. Abati. Okay, it's as follows. Go. Now, um, the interview, after the interview, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi issued a statement in response to the uh, military, in which uh, the platform that published it was asking Arise TV to apologize uh, to uh, Sheikh Gumi and uh, for the military to also apologize to Sheikh Gumi. Now, I don't see anything that Arise TV has done mm -hmm. that warrants an apology. It was a live interview. Everybody listened and heard uh, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi. I'm sure maybe that statement, that initial reaction was written for him uh, by someone who did not watch the news. We didn't put any spin on it. Everybody had him uh, because it's an open platform. Yes. So in no way did we edit his statement. And it's good that you played it. I had to break now. And when we come back, we'll continue on this conversation. So do stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show. We're still on What's Trending. Dr. Bati, you're about to wrap up your uh, yes, thoughts. Yes, earlier on I said that uh, Shea Gumi on this matter has issued about two different reactions to the statement by the uh, Nigerian army. In the first statement, he was asking for apology from Arise TV and the military. And I was saying that Arise TV has done no wrong yes. in this matter. It was a live interview that everybody listened to. And I was saying it was good you played the tape. We showed that what uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmad Gumi said was that some bad elements yes. uh, within the military, and in no way has Arise News tried to put any spin or construction on it. That's the first point. Now, the military, what the military said is that they admitted that there are some black sheep, you know, within their fold, and that they, you know, they, they, they cannot give any excuse in that regard. And there's no difference between what the Army uh, public relations man was saying and what uh, Shei Gumi uh, said. I think we need to state that very clearly. Very clear. Now, Sheikh Gumi, in another statement, maybe after his attention was drawn to the errors in his first statement, or the statement that was issued on his behalf, said he was not referring to the military as an institution. No, he wasn't. He was referring to some elements uh, within the uh, military. So I think uh, the military should be uh, satisfied uh, with the position that uh, you know he has taken in that regard. But the major point made by uh, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi which could be more controversial, is his position that the bandits are themselves victims and that he is of the firm belief 
that the Nigerian government should negotiate with those uh, bandits. And you'll recall that on the basis of that, we're asking the question whether I'll be calling for negotiation uh, with other persons who are protesting in other parts of uh, Nigeria. And he talked about a planned visit to the southwest of the, uh, of the country. So those are the issues. I don't think that the uh, controversy about uh, certain elements or no elements of the military uh, you know, are, are important. What is important is that the Nigerian army continues to try its possible best. Uh, whether it's been able to win the war or not is another question entirely. But clearly, Nigerians you know, appreciate the sacrifice being made by our soldiers. And we keep arguing on this program every time that a lot more should be done for these soldiers in terms of welfare, in terms of motivation, in terms of building their capacity to be able to ensure uh, the protection of the sovereignty of Nigeria. Well said, Dr. Abati. We'll take another story. In a video now making the rounds on social media, the Controller General of Nigeria Immigration Service, Mohamed Babandede, vowed to deal decisively with corrupt immigration officers found aiding illegal migrants and those who use the Nigerian borders to perpetrate unlawful transactions. Babandede, who made the declaration at the NIS Casina Command headquarters, said the main job of the Immigration Service was to secure the nation and that he was willing to engage traditional rulers. We must stop this. Enough is enough. You look the other side, a person pass, and he passes with a gun. You look the other side, an irregular migrant wanted by police or by other securities passes and enters. You look around, a kidnapper passes. If you look at the other side, I will make sure you move the other side. You leave the service. This must change in this country. We cannot continue like this. You know where all the illegal migrants are. Some of them have stayed, have become Nigerians. We have cases where we prosecute Nigerians who attempt to get passport in, in this command. And they were assisted by you, an officer. And the officer had the gut to say, to talk to somebody to beg. To beg for what? We cannot collect bribe and compromise our country. That's the major cost. You know them. You know the bad guys. You know where they sleep. You know where they work. You know everything about them. But because of little income you collect from them, you don't mention it. Okay, we we'll work with the traditional institutions. And I would like to empower local government officers. Very key. All officers and local government, I would like to empower them to check, monitor, and report. Our duty is not passport. All of you, you want to go to passport. It's not passport. Our major job, yes, we issue passport, but that's not our major job. Our major job is to guard the security of this country. The borders, land, sea, and air. We are doing well in air. But for the land borders, you think nobody sees you. You do so many things. If you do well, you see well. If you do bad, you see bad from me. I hope that is clear to everybody. <laughs> Rufai, I thought this was such a powerful message, but do you believe that the immigration can actually achieve what the commander has, you know, made them, uh, has forced them to do now, to stop OG collecting bribes? Oji, they can achieve it, but you see, there's a big problem, and I'll use a local phrase called egunje. Egunje? Yes. What does that mean? Bribe. That's right. the problem. Right. That, you see, they can achieve it. Just look at what he said. People are giving Nigerians, Nigerian passports, because of, Oji, when you look at this money they are collecting in bribe, as little as 20, 30,000 naira. Some custom officers, I'm not saying all of them, well, please don't quote me, oh, will decide to sell the sovereignty of Nigeria very cheap and look the other way because of bribe. And I'm happy that the immigration boss is saying this himself. Because yeah. you see, if we say it in the press, they say no. Uh, the press is hard on us. Go to every passport office in Nigeria to see the racketeering that goes on. You know what shocks me the most in this country? For every passport office you go, you see Sevicom. Sevicom is supposed to report to. But it looks as though the Sevicom officials and the immigration officer, the passport official, they are colluding. Because Sevicom knows how to look the other way. Sevicom is there to regulate, but you'll be shocked the level of racketeering that goes there, that goes on there. So we need to stop this. Because in the spirit of getting small cash, 
We are endangering our lives as Nigerians. We are allowing criminals coming to this country to destroy our country. And that's why we asked Sheikh Gumi yesterday that most of these bandits, some governors are saying they are foreigners, he was quick to push the blame on immigration officials. He said, I'm not an immigration official. I'm not an immigration You're official. Right. So yeah. how am I supposed to know that these people are foreigners? And so I'm in all of this fight against banditry, we can't exonerate the immigration officials that have been complicit in all of this. I think you make a very valid point, Rufai. I and mean, that was my thought exactly when I watched this video about the governor saying that these Boko Haram insurgents are not Nigerians. Well, that point has been made as yeah. well, that everybody is looking to the military mm -hmm. in the fight against insurgency and banditry, but nobody is paying enough attention to immigration. Now, the Comptroller General spoke very well, and, but I only have one part that confused me. He said that some people will be transferred to other posts and they must not dare to try and get politicians and traditional rulers yeah, to true. intervene on their behalf. Why can't they be dismissed? Because if they're transferred, they're, they're going to take their corruption to, to their another, new post. Yes, they should that's be removed another point. entirely from he the He also service. emphasized that they're, they will be removed. They should. They're they a disgrace to the uniform yes. that they wear. Absolutely. Dr. Abati, your analysis well, of the, the story. Well, the full video that I watched, the... Um, Controller General started by saying that he was not impressed with the parry, yes. with the drill. And that it was very obvious that uh, these particular immigration officers were not doing their drills the on a daily Hold basis. It. And for that reason, he thought that uh, they were not being professional enough. And from there, he went on to the point about traditional rulers. He was in Katsina mm -hmm. to engage with traditional rulers and to appeal to traditional rulers to help the immigration service identify foreigners within their communities who may have overstayed their welcome and who have not registered. Now, the third point was about bribery, saying that these immigration officials, they, they collect 2020 Naira and constitute a risk to Nigeria. Well, we would like to tell uh, Controller General uh, Babandedi that immigration as an institution, as a state institution, has its own rules. You should just go ahead and apply the rules. They have a section that monitors staff why is that section of immigration not doing its work? As regards uh, aliens, there's something in immigration called SEPAC, expatriate residence uh, permit, and an uh, alien card. And sometime early last year, or was it in 2019, they had an exercise around that, trying to register aliens. Now, what is the update on that? And do they have a record of expatriate quota, of expatriate registration, of alien registration in Nigeria? If they do that, then, of course, uh, immigration should have a monitoring system to be able to track aliens or expatriates, as they call them, who are inside Nigeria. That way, that will check the uh, excessiveness of those officers on the roads. And the reason he was saying he would transfer people, his argument is that if you stay too long in a place, you will become like some kingpin. You know the territory. You, are, you have customers, as uh, you know, state officials tend to have. And that becomes a source of, a, of a pepper soup. So uh, we understand where Babandede is coming from, but th there should be internal mechanisms that should address this beyond him just uh, making a statement. And, uh, you know, and as for those officers that cannot do the drill, they should be properly trained. Right. Because that talks about, that points to lack of uh, discipline and training of what use is a uniformed officer who cannot match properly. <laughs> well, I don't know, Rufai, do you? I don't know. If you ask me, now who I go ask? <laughs> no, you did NYC now. Even NYC, they told us now. Ajuaya. Le, le, Ajuaya. Le, le, oh, Ajuaya. Do you know what he's talking about, Ajuaya? <laughs> Dr. Abati. Dr. Abati. <laughs> you to be the clarion call. Let us leave the nation high. You'll be surprised. Oh, the sun, oh, in that, the rain. That I can see to live right, live right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Thank see you, you very guys much. tomorrow.